I've had this camera for 3 years already, the hand grips are already worn out, this camera has been to all the trips that I've been ko, and I've only dropped this once and it made a dent on the body of my camera. Ko. I'm angry when it comes to camera gears because it's expensive and it's hard to buy a new gear. The question I wanted to answer in this video is, is the Canon G7X Mark II still worth it as a YouTube entry camera in 2020? Siguro most people that are looking into this camera are the ones who make YouTube videos using their phone and they wanted an upgrade. So let's break this camera down into its advantages and disadvantages. This was a graduation gift I received from my aunt when I finished college in 2017. So ko kasi, it's scary to invest in something kung hindi ka naman talaga sure kung gagamitin mo siya ng pangmatagalan. But 3 years later, it's still working but there's a slight drop in video quality niya when you use it this much. The rubber grips are torn apart na but still usable and functioning really well. The touchscreen and the buttons are still reactive. So all in all, the build quality is really good and it will last you for a long time. So sulit na sulit talaga ibabahid mo to this camera. Autofocus is one of the most important feature in a camera if you want to use it for YouTube or vlogging. It sucks to watch a YouTube video pagka blurry mukha na nagsasalita. So let me set it up for you. I'll keep talking and observe nyo, diba? And I'm comfortable panoorin ng isang YouTube video na out of focus sa mukha na nagsasalita yung camera. So let me just pull back yung focus sa mukha ko. So if you see a YouTube video na out of focus yung mukha na nagsasalita, it's probably because the camera they're using doesn't have a good autofocus feature. Let me show you an autofocus test to see how good Canon G7X Mark II tracks people's faces. Okay, let's do an autofocus test. In frame, out frame. In frame, out frame. In frame, out frame, in frame, out frame. So makita mo, ang bilis niya mag ano, capture ulit ng face ko. So ang bilis niya detect yung face ko pagka nag in and out of frame ako. Kasi nga maganda yung uh, autofocus ng camera na to. One of the best things that I can vouch for this camera is sobrang reliable ng autofocus niya. Like, when you're out there, may gusto kang kunin na moment, just pop it out, open mo yung uh, power button, and just press capture, and you can trust na makukuha niya talaga yung moment na kailangan mo. When you're filming your own self, it's just really helpful to have a flip screen to check whether you're in frame, is the exposure right, it just makes the whole process easier. It's also good in low light because it has a very fast lens. It can go down to f1.8. Let me go to a dark place for you to check it out. Okay, ngayon naman, let's try shooting sa darker area or yung low light test. Dun tayo magsushoot sa area na yun, sa walang ilaw. This is how it looks like sa low lighting condition. I just pop the screen yung mga settings na ginamit ko for this shot. It could also provide you a shallow depth of field. Ito yung blurry background and foreground. You could see some shallow depth of field or blurry background sa likod ko. It has also dynamic image stabilization, so if you're doing a run and gun style of vlog, this camera would work fine for you. Hindi magiging sobrang shaking footage mo if you hold the camera properly. Okay, this is an image stabilization test. So as you can see, naglalakad ako and uh, gumagalaw ako. So kung tiyin mo, diba, stable pa rin yung shot kahit gumagalaw ka, naglalakad ka. Kasi nga dahil yun sa image stabilization ng camera na to. It is a point and shoot camera, so sobrang hand ya. Let me compare its size to my phone. You could bring it almost anywhere, sobrang handy niya and laking tulong niya kasi to make you look suspicious especially pagka nagsushoot ka sa mga private establishments. Sobrang higpit ng mga security guard dito sa Pinas. They won't allow you to vlog or take a photo if you're using a mirrorless camera or a DSLR camera. Canon's color science is just really good. You could use the footage straight out of the camera. Hindi mo na kailangan mag-color grade pa para gumanda yung kulay ng footage mo. Plus, Canon's user interface is the best when it comes to cameras. It's like the iOS ng mga camera user interface. Face. Sobrang user-friendly niyang gamitin. It has a decent slow motion at 60 frames per second. It has a built-in MD filter. Siguro for beginners, hindi nyo ito ma-appreciate. But if you're an intermediate camera user, it will be very handy sa mga sobrang bright situations. It will help you decrease the light coming in para ma-maintain my shutter speed and aperture mode that you want to dial in. Now, let's talk about the downside of this camera. For me, the number one downside of this camera siguro is yung audio niya. You can put an external mic into this camera so you're stuck with the internal mic. When you want to shoot yourself in a wider frame, this is a tight shot. You have to put your camera farther away than the usual. This is the wide shot. And the more na lumalay sa yung mic, the more the noise the mic picks up, and the less it picks up your voice. I've seen others work around this problem by recording their audio through their phone, 
or kaya naman they use an external mic recorder, then they just sync it in editing. Downside number two, it doesn't have an interchangeable lens feature kasi nga point shoot camera siya. Having interchangeable lens feature allows you to have so much flexibility and it allows you to be creatively stimulating kasi it gives you a fresh and new perspective. The internal lens is fine, pero it would be better sana if mas wider pa yung lens na to, where you could show yourself and your surroundings by just holding the camera at arm's length. That's all the downside that I could mention. Let's just put a summary into this video. This camera was released in February of 2016, so it's already for in the market and dami na ibang point shoot camera yung dumating. So compared to others, is this still a good buy in 2020? My basic answer is yes. Siguro yung mga notable comparison to this camera was yung predecessor niya, yung G7X Mark III, which has a lot of issues, it has overheating issues, and yung autofocus niya is not as fast as the G7X Mark II, which is weird kasi nga it has supposed to be an upgrade. The only thing better in Mark III is it shoots in 4K, it has 120 frames per second, and has an external mic in. But the Sony RX100 Mark 7 it's just too expensive for a point-and-shoot camera. The only camera that's really competing to this as the most worthy point-and-shoot camera is the Sony CD1. So obviously, it's a new release camera in 2020, so yung specs niya, it's just way better than the G7X Mark II. The autofocus of that camera is good. It has an external mic input, but it costs $750 or 37,500 pesos. And the question is, as a beginner in YouTube, would you spend that money or just buy yung Canon G7X at $300 or 25,000 pesos. So it's really up to you. For me, if you're really, really working on a very, very tight budget, the Canon G7X Mark II is still a good entry camera for YouTube. It checks the box, gives you full HD quality videos, has a good autofocus. In frame, out frame. In frame, out frame. In frame, good in low light. This is how it looks like a low lighting condition. It's small and compact. It has a flip screen. It's not the best, but it definitely gets the job done. Gears helps us make better stories. It helps us make better videos. But at the end of the day, the story we are telling is the most important piece of the video. Just always keep that in mind. That's it for this video. If you appreciate the video, please don't forget to hit the like button. If you like my vibe, consider subscribing. That's it. See you on the next one. Bye!